So yesterday, we went over the fundamentals of all kinds of vector addition. Right? We did collinear vectors, we did perpendicular vectors, and then at the very end of the day, we got into um, kind of randomly angled vectors that require us to use vector component addition. Right? And what we did with that question, it looked something like this. You had a vector that was angled, and it had an x and a y component, and then we had a vector that went on the end of that, that was horizontal, and we had to figure out what the resultant was, okay? which was that line there, which also had an x and a y component. We were trying to find out what the overall displacement was. Okay? In order to do that, we surmised that what we needed was all these x's and y's so that we could figure out the final right angle triangle for our results, okay? in this case the displacement. So what we did was we used trigonometry because we knew how long this side was, we knew what theta was, and we were able to use trig to figure out what x and y were. Once we knew what green x was, we added it to whatever the blue line was, and that gave us red x. And we figured out what y was, green y, using trigonometry, green y and red y were equal, okay? and then we were able to figure out the triangle from there. Okay? Finding the x's and y's is resolving a vector into its components. We need to resolve all our vectors into their x and y, or horizontal and vertical components. And then we can put all the components together. Because then we're just dealing with a bunch of x components that are all collinear, and a bunch of y components that are all collinear, okay? and they're easy to use. So that's what we're going to look at today, okay? the fundamentals of doing that, okay? and then how we solve problems related to that. Okay, questions so far? All right, so if I know how big line A is, the blue line there, the hypotenuse of that triangle, and I know what the angle, theta, is, then I can find the other two sides of the triangle, right? I mean, in math, you learn that if you have two pieces of information about a triangle, you have all you need to figure out all the other information about the triangle, as long as you have two pieces of information, a side and an angle, two sides, okay, things like that. Um, so, if we've got that, then we can figure out how far over we go following vector A and how far up we go following vector A. In other words, the horizontal and vertical components of that motion. Okay, so if A was northeast, okay, then I would figure out how far east the X and how far north the Y okay, we went. Everyone okay with that? So the trigonometry part comes in here. If I know A, A is the hypotenuse. Okay, and we got theta here. Is AX adjacent or opposite to the angle? Okay, it's the adjacent side. So this is kind of just a geometry review here. Okay, and this would make this the opposite side. Okay, since I have the hypotenuse and I have the angle in most cases, Okay, then I would use trig functions to get the adjacent and opposite sides. That's where SOHCAHTOA comes in. Okay, so means that sine of theta equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, and so if I want to find the opposite side and I know the hypotenuse and the angle, I just manipulate this by bringing the hypotenuse over by multiplying. Everybody okay with that? Okay, if I'm using, okay, ka instead of so, that's going to be the cos of theta equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, same deal. I'm probably going to be looking for the adjacent side, so I'm going to bring the hypotenuse over here, okay, in order to solve for that adjacent side. Right? And in some cases, often at the end of the question, okay, I might have to use tan, which is opposite over adjacent. All right, so as long as we remember those, we can't really go wrong on our trigonometry. Okay? Again, I'm going to give you the warning I gave you yesterday about the use of sine law. Okay? While sine law is fine in math and it gets you an answer in math, it does not help to analyze the motion or the components of it because it looks just as it 
answer and not what got you there. And in physics, we're concerned with what gets you there. Okay? Um, so we need to look at the individual parts and use simple trigonometric ratios to solve those problems. Okay? All right, so if I've got this triangle here, okay, again, where A is my hypotenuse, and I wanted to calculate the X component, that would be the bottom part of this triangle, this would be X, okay? That would be taking the hypotenuse, A, and multiplying it by the cos of theta. That will give me this side. Solving for the adjacent side, but going hypotenuse times the cos of theta, all right? Similar for this side. Right, if I want to find the opposite side, I take the hypotenuse, I multiply by the sine of theta. Is y always going to be the opposite side? No. It all depends on how the triangle gets drawn. Okay? So I just don't want you to get the idea that y is always opposite, x is always adjacent. It's not. Okay? It just so happens that in the first few examples we've looked at, it was. Okay? But it depends on the triangle as well. Okay. Um, everybody all right with that? That's just trig review kind of part of it there. Okay. So if I want to find the x and y components, that's the trigonometry I would use to do it. Okay, so if I've got this triangle here and the displacement vector is 175 meters, okay, and it's uh, 50 degrees above the horizontal, okay, so it's relative to the x-axis, so that would be above the horizontal. How would I find x? How would I find y? All right, x is the adjacent side, so what trig function am I using? Cos. Okay, so to find this x, okay, I would do um, this right here. So, sorry, it's hard to read it. So x will be, okay, the cos of 50 degrees times the hypotenuse, 175 meters, okay, and that will give me 112 meters. There's more decimals than that, but I'm just not writing them. Okay, what do we do with all those decimals? Keep them. Keep them. Yeah, keep them in your calculator, okay, um, because you're going to need to keep all of those decimals and only round your final answer. Okay, so never round until the very end of a problem, okay, just your final answer. Now, I know that on some calculators, okay, it's much easier to just go back up and grab a number, like on, on this one, which is the 84 plus, I can just hit the up button and grab any number or operation I want. Obviously on some of the older models, that's not how you store the numbers, but you can store them, okay, by going um, second, and then you go, oh, what was it? I learned it last night. Um, I think it was memory, and then you had to pick a letter. So then you'd go alpha and pick a letter, and then that letter would be assigned to that number. It's really a pain in the neck. I think it's actually quicker to write down all the decimals on paper okay, than to actually go through the rigmarole of actually entering those numbers into the memory of the calculator. Okay, and then to recall it, you'd go second recall alpha A, and then it puts an A down, but it's actually the number you saved for A. Just write it down. How yeah, much easier it is to just write it down? If you don't have, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit more time. Okay. Um, all right. So that'll get me that opposite side. Okay. And then if I want to find the, or sorry, the adjacent side. If I want to find the opposite side, that's y. Okay. Well, then I would go sine of 50 degrees. So still theta times the hypotenuse, still 175. And that'll give me 134 meters. Obviously, there's more decimals after that. And so now I know that. This side is 112 meters, and this side is 134 meters. Okay. At this point, it's always a good idea to check your math. Okay? And here's what I mean by check your math. If I get for this triangle that has a 50 degree angle, that x is bigger than y, but then something wrong. That's what I mean by check. Because sometimes you, you switch the trig functions. You do that wrong by accident. And you're looking at your numbers, and if you don't catch that, at the end of the question, you're going to have inserted an X for a Y, and you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? So always make sure or double check that your answers make logical sense. You're going to hear me say that a lot throughout the course. Because okay? I have people who, you know, they're, they're just working hard, they're nervous, they're anxious, and they're writing down stuff, and they write down an answer that was simply the result of punching one thing in wrong on the calculator, 
the answer makes no sense whatsoever, but they write it down anyway. Okay? And then they lose one mark out of five, because all their work was right, but they just didn't double check that their answer made sense. Okay, like for example, if I've got a question about a tortoise, like walking or whatever they do, crawling, okay, along the floor for 10 seconds, how far will it go? And you get 500 meters, you know, that really doesn't make sense, okay? But people just write it down because it's what their calculator said without verifying and checking that it actually makes sense, okay? For a tortoise to walk a half a kilometer, crawl, whatever it does, it is obviously going to take more than 10 seconds, okay? You want to follow? Always just double check. Okay, is everyone okay with the finding the vector components? Okay, all right. So here's what we do with vector component addition. That's kind of what we did yesterday. If I'm told, add these vectors, and I'm told it's this vector here, this blue one, and this vector here, okay? Obviously, I would draw a vector diagram that looks like that. Okay, I would draw the first one, and then I put the second one tail to head. And along the way, I would draw these triangles in, kind of like what we did yesterday. So this would be my angle, okay? This would be the y component of b. This would be the x component of b. And similarly, this would be the x component of a, and this would be the y component of a. What's, what do we call c? The resultants. Okay, it is going to be the hypotenuse of the final triangle, but it's still our resultant. It's what the sum of the other two vectors is. Okay. Now, if I want to find out how big C is, what I need to know is how far over do I go in total? How far up do I go in total? So if I can find out that about each part, how far over do I go when following A? How far up do I go when following A? How far over do I go in following B? How far up do I go? And let me put those together. You can see here in the second diagram, if I take AX and BX, they add up to one side of C's triangle. Okay, they add up to, grab their own color. They add up to this. Okay, AX and BX add up to that. And if I take AY and BY, they add up to the full side of that triangle. That's why we break it down into its parts. Okay, and kind of all in there. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. That's okay. and then we at the end when we have that full triangle, then we can use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared gives us this. And we can use trigonometry to get the angle. Opposite over adjacent or whatever. Okay, to get us the angle. Right, that's what we ended off with yesterday, with doing one like that. So, I want you guys to write this one down, and we're going to walk through it step by step. Okay? So this one's more involved than the one we did yesterday. Both vectors are angled in this one. Okay? Actually, we're going to change one thing. I'm going to delete that diagram. And we're going to change this to thirty degrees um, right of vertical. Okay, so thirty degrees right of vertical. Just because that makes more sense than the seventy degrees. Okay, so write that down as it is there, and then we're going to walk through it. We're going to draw the diagram, okay, we're going to find the x's and y's, add the x's and y's, get our resultants, get our vector. Okay, so first step in uh, solving a vector addition problem is to draw the vector diagram. Okay, so that's our first thing. So my first vector is 145 meters long, and it's 30 degrees right of vertical. Okay, so if I'm drawing that, I'm going to draw a line that's vertical, and then I'm going to go 30 degrees to the right of it to draw my vector. Okay, so that's going to look like this. 
here x or y this is x because it's the horizontal part of this motion okay that would make this side y and that would make this side 145 meters okay have I done an okay job with scale at least on the angle, right? I haven't drawn another line, so 145 is 145 on here. Okay. My next thing is I need to draw the next vector, and it is 105 meters, 35 degrees below the horizontal. Okay. So that means I've got to go horizontally as my reference line. I'm going to go 35 degrees below that for 105 meters. So should that line be longer or shorter than the first one? Right. So 35 degrees would be, uh, that was not straight, not good at all. Let's try that again. That's less than 35 degrees. Okay, so am I struggling with scale here? Yes. All right, is scale still important? That's better. And then I'm just going to shorten it so it's more like 105, yeah, something like that. So that's 35 degrees below the horizontal. That's 105 meters long. That's x, that's y. Now, again, I didn't measure that. Okay? I didn't measure those angles. I didn't measure the lines but it should be close enough to scale for my diagram to not lie to me when I get my math done. Okay? Because that often happens. People aren't careful about the scale on the diagram. They do all their math and then go, wait a minute, my math says I'm going south of east and my picture shows me going north of east. Well, I must have messed up the math. But in actual fact, they didn't mess up the math at all. They messed up the picture. All right, so those are my two vectors. I drew them tail to head, as we've been told to do. Okay. I've labeled my x's and y's. My overall displacement would be, oh, it's touching the board. displacement would be this line here. It would have a vector of theta, which I'll calculate later. Is this side here x or y? This is x, and this is y. Alright, my diagram is done. What do I need to do next? Yeah, I need to figure out what all the x's and all the y's are. Okay? Uh, my suggestion would be do that one vector at a time. So get black x, black y, then get green x and green y. Okay? Then you can add, add them up after that. Okay? That way you're dealing with one triangle at a time. So uh, first thing I want to find, I'll find uh, black y. Is black y adjacent or opposite my angle? Yes, so it's adjacent. So which trig function am I using? Coast. Remember how I said y is not always going to be the opposite side? Here it's not. Okay. So black y is going to be the cos of 30 degrees times 145. Okay. So it's 125.57 uh, meters. I'm not going to write down all of the decimals. I'm just going to keep them in a calculator. 125.57. And that's going to be north. Or sorry, up. So I'm just going to write positive because it's up. Okay? And then black x is opposite the 30 degree angle. So what trig function will I use for that? Sine. Sine. Okay, 
Okay, so we should be looking at 72.5. meters and that will also be positive because it's to the right. Okay, so I found the horizontal and vertical components of my first vector. Do I need to do the same thing with my second vector? So green y, okay? Is green y opposite or adjacent to the 35 degree angle? Opposite. It's opposite. All right, so I'm going to go sine of 35 times 105 times the hypotenuse. Cool. All right, so that's 60.23. beside that 60.23. Negative. It's down, right? My other y component was up, so I've got to keep that in mind. That one's negative. Okay, x is the adjacent side, so that's going to be cos is that? It doesn't look like an s. Cos of 35 times 105. So that's 86.01 meters. Is that one positive or negative? Positive. Positive, because it's still going to the right. Okay, so I now know that green X is 86, positive 86. I know that green Y is negative 60. Okay, I know that black Y is um, 125, positive. And I know that black X is positive 72.5. Okay, so I know all of those numbers. I need to figure out what the red line is. Okay, the red arrow, the one labeled displacement. Right? In order to get that, I need to know red X and red Y. How do I go about getting the length of red X? T. You have both uh, you have black X and green X. Exactly. I add black X and green X together. Okay, they're both positive, so they're uh, it's it's an easy operation. We'll have 72.5 plus 86.01. Okay, and of course I'm going to keep all of my decimals when I do that. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, 72.5 because that one I actually didn't do in the calculator. Okay, um, plus the um, sorry 86. All right, so I've got 158.51 is the length of x meters, and that's positive. How do I calculate red y? You're going to take black y and subtract. Right, okay, now we call it vector addition. We're going to subtract because one's negative, one's positive, but like in the strictest sense, you're supposed to add the negative. I'm not too sticky about that, whichever makes more sense to you. In the end, it's mathematically the same thing. Okay? Um, and truth be told, I subtract when I do it too. Okay? Um, all right, so we've got 125.57 uh, minus our 60.23. Okay, so we've got our overall y being 65.35. And is it positive or negative? Positive. It's positive. Okay, so now that I've got red x and red y, can I find d? Yeah, yes. What do we do? Right, I use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I use x squared plus y squared will give me square root of d. Okay, so that's how I'll get the magnitude of D.
Okay, do I need to keep all the decimals again? Yes. Okay, so 171.453. Meters. Okay, that doesn't have a positive or negative on it because it's angled. So what do I need? I need the direction. I need the angle. Right? It's a vector quantity. So I've got to calculate what's theta. Okay, how can I do that? Using um, your displacement. Yeah, I can use any trig function I want. I had to calculate all three sides of this triangle. If I screwed something up, it's too late now. Okay? I can use sine, I can use cos, I can use tan, because I know d, y, and x. So pick your favorite. Okay? You don't have to tell me what your favorite is, or even admit that you have a favorite trig function, because I understand there's a stigma attached to that. Okay? So theta, for me, is going to be tan to the minus 1. I'm going to use the opposite side, which the way I drew it is 65. Divided by the adjacent side, which the way I drew it is the 158. Okay, so I'm getting 22.4 <coughs> degrees. What's my direction? Did they give me compass direction? Go to the right. Okay. That's maybe part of it. This angle would be measured above the positive x-axis or above the positive horizontal. That's what they gave in the question. They said above the horizontal, right to vertical. Okay, those were the directions we were given. So that's the directions we would give in our answer. Okay, I would say above positive x-axis is probably the most accurate. Okay, above the positive x-axis. Now, am I done? No. No. I still haven't done the significant digits part, which I know we haven't talked about yet, but okay, basically for 95 to 98% of the questions you're going to do, you just go back to the beginning and you go, all right, this had three significant digits, this had three significant digits, this had three, that had three, my answer should have three, okay? So then I go back down to here and I go, all right, 171. at 22.4 degrees above the positive x axis. And that would be my final answer. Okay. That's about as involved as they get if you've got a two vector question. Okay. Are there are a lot of steps. Yes. Did it take us a long time? Yes. You'll get better at it. Okay? It's not going to get it to be any less work. You'll just be faster at it. Okay? Because here's the good news. It doesn't matter what question I give you. Those are the steps you can follow. Draw the diagram. Isolate all the x's. Isolate all the y's. Add the x's. Add the y's. Pythagoras. Trig. Final answer. Okay? Always the same steps for vector component. So it's just a matter of getting used to them and getting faster. Okay? When we're done this unit, that question take you seven, eight minutes. Just took us like 15 or 16, okay? But that's because I was going slow. Okay? You'll get faster and faster. Yes. Okay, everyone all right with how that one worked? Okay, so the, the toughest part, as I said, is drawing the diagram, okay? And I get that. Kind of by the end, this diagram's starting to look a bit busy. It gets worse when they start backtracking on themselves. Okay, um, it gets a little bit crazier. So if looking at that is like really like busy and hard for you to interpret, you can do this by a, what we call the separate triangle method, which is exactly what it sounds like. Don't draw them tail to head. Just draw the triangles all separately. Calculate all the x's and y's, and then build your triangle at the end. 
mathematically, it's still the same steps. The only downfall, at least I see it as a downfall to that method, is that you don't ever see the big picture. Okay? Um, in this diagram, I know what my last triangle looks like before I calculate it. And then I can go, oh, these numbers make sense. If you're using the separate triangle method, you don't see this until you've calculated the sides and you can actually draw it. That's its kind of downfall. Okay? But it's up to you. Mathematically, the same uh, method. All right. Let's take a four minute break here. Answer your snap, do whatever, okay? Just stay in the classroom, but just take a little mental break after all of that, and then we'll try another one. I'd like you guys to try one and three. They are, they are way simpler than what we just did. Okay? All you're having to do for one and three is find either the x or the y component of the vector they give you. Okay, so there's, no, there's only one vector and you're only having to find like one side of it. Right? So this is simply an exercise in practicing that resolving a vector into its component stuff, finding x or finding y, whichever you're being asked for. Okay, so way, way easier than what we just did. Okay, I've got a displacement vector that's 15 kilometers, 40 degrees east of north. So my reference line goes north. I go 40 degrees east of that, like so. There's my 40 degrees. Okay, here's my 15 kilometers. All right, this would be um, the north or y component. This would be the east or x component. They want the north. Okay, so is north adjacent or opposite? It's adjacent. So to get y, I'm going to go cos of 40 times 15. Okay? And when I do that, I should get 11 kilometers north. Okay. All right. How are we doing on number three? We've already done three. Okay. I'll give you another minute here. And then we'll get number three. So for this one here, we've got a snowmobile that travels 65 kilometers, 37 degrees east of south. So my reference line is south. I go 37 degrees east of that. That would be that way. Okay, so that's going to be my 37 degrees. That will be my x component. This will be my y component. x is east, y is south. They want to know how far east, so I'm looking for x. Is x opposite or adjacent? It's opposite. So what trig function do I use? Sine. sine. Okay. So I'll go that uh, x equals <coughs> the sine of 37 times 65. Okay. So on your calculator, that looks like that sine 37. Okay. Um, so when I punch it in, sine 37. Close the brackets times 65. Okay. And we've got 39 kilometers east. Everybody okay with how that one worked? Okay, so that's the basics of what we of the big question we did just a little while ago. Finding x, finding y, finding the two sides of any vector's triangle. Okay. Um, okay, I would like you guys to try number two. Okay. I'll make it bigger so you can read it better. Okay, so we're looking for the displacement of a soccer player who runs 15 meters at 15 degrees north of east and then 13 meters at 5 degrees west of north. So there's some backtracking involved in this one. Okay, so scale will be important. Okay, it's even more important on the one after that, but okay, for number two, scale is still important. I'll give you a minute or two and then I'll draw the diagram and then I'll give you some more time. Okay, so I've got um, first my first vector is 15 meters at 15 degrees north of east. Okay, and my other one's west of north. So I should probably start near the bottom because everything goes north. Okay, um, and I'm not going to go very much west given this very small angle here. Okay, so I'm going to go north of east. That means my reference is east. Okay, for 15 meters, 
Okay, and 15 degrees is a pretty shallow triangle. Maybe a little bigger than that. Let's try that again. Because okay, I said scale's important, right? So let's say that's maybe more like 15 degrees. Okay, and it's 15 meters, which is not at all confusing later. Okay, so there's my first vector. And then my next vector's 13 meters, 5 degrees west of north. So my reference is north. It's an extremely shallow triangle. Okay, this angle here being 5 degrees. Here's x, here's y, and that's 13 meters. So I've done a decent job with my scale. The 13 is shorter than the 15. The 5 is noticeably smaller than the 15. Okay. That means my overall displacement goes from my initial position to my final position. Okay. I'm going to draw that final triangle like this, but you're just as correct to draw it over top of the other lines you've drawn. Either way is fine. Okay. So this will be my overall displacement. This will be my vector, x and y. Give you a little bit more time on that one. Okay. So how did we do with the diagram? Did we get it mostly right? And it's okay if like early on that's not like your answer is not yes. Okay? It, the diagram is like I said, is the trickiest part. It takes some practice to get those diagrams drawn correctly. Right? What's the step that comes after drawing the diagram? What do I have to find now? Right. Now I've got to find all the x's and y's. If I'm going to find my overall result, the green line labeled D, okay, I need its overall displacement east and its overall displacement north. And the only way I'll get that is to figure out how far east and north I went in each of the other sections. Okay, because those are the things that right now I have enough information to calculate. Right? So we've got to find black x, black y, using trade red y and red x using trig. Once we know those, green x should be black x combined with red x. Red x would be negative because it's west. Okay? And then the overall y, green y, should be black y plus red y. Okay? And that's part of the reason I drew it this way so that it makes that box. Okay? It kind of makes it a little clearer that those two things go together. How many people have all the x's and all the y's? All right, I'll give you a little more time on that. that that's time consuming, that part. It's a lot of typing. Yeah.